If you care about your privacy, your VPN should be private Internet access. The only VPN to prove multiple times in court, they don't log your activity. A VPN hides your IP address online, preventing your ISP and big tech companies from tracking what you do. Private Internet access is lightning fast with IP addresses in 91 countries and all 50 states, plus with a 30 day money back guarantee and 24 seven customer support. It's really worth trying. Get 83% off, which is just 203 a month, plus four extra months for free at piavpn.com slash David P. Elon Musk's Tesla expected to lay off more than 10% of its workforce, and everybody is seeing in this what they want to ascribe politically either to Elon Musk or to electric vehicles. I think both interpretations are wrong here and I want to discuss it. CNBC reporting Dow surges more than 100 points as strong retail sales and earnings overshadow the Iran Israel conflict. But one company that is not doing so well is Tesla. Tesla will lay off more than 10 percent of its global workforce. And it gives access, the article does, to an Elon Musk memo that refers to preparing the company for the next phase of growth, looking at cost reductions, increasing productivity. And indeed, there is going to be a more than 10 percent layoff of Tesla staff. Now, let me give you a couple different perspectives on this that are being floated, none of which I think really captures what's going on. And I say this, I'm, I'm going to give this disclaimer, even though people said I no longer have to because I no longer own the stock. Some people still think I do. I used to own Tesla stock. I sold all of it. OK, I still drive a Tesla for a few more months, but then my lease is over and I'm getting almost certainly something different. Um, so this has nothing to do with my personal connection to Tesla. And quite frankly, I don't I don't you know, I had such a relatively small amount of stock anyway. It doesn't even really matter. Uh, there are some who really don't like Elon Musk and are saying this is what Elon Musk has caused. Elon Musk has ruined Tesla. It's terrible. He ruined it just like he ruined uh, Twitter by turning it into X and all of the things that are going on. So the 10 percent layoff is simply because Elon Musk sucks. I don't think that's actually the situation in this particular case. The other side of this is this is because electric vehicles are terrible. The technology is no good. The cars are no good. You can't drive far like Trump likes to say. This is an indictment of electric vehicles in general. I think that is also the wrong interpretation. I think that this has very little to do with Elon Musk and with electric vehicles as the problem and everything to do with how comparatively Tesla is starting to not have the very obvious first mover advantage that it once did. It is still the case that with few exceptions when it comes to range, Tesla is at the top when it comes to electric vehicles, although increasingly and especially with 2025 model years, there will be lots of good competition in terms of vehicle range. That's not good for Tesla, but Tesla vehicles still have great range when it comes to the charging network. Tesla still has the best charging network. Some other companies are being given access to it. Rivian vehicles, for example, I believe now can start using Tesla superchargers. But it is still the case that Tesla, as far as charging for longer trips, is the most convenient rather than dealing with level two chargers, which can take seven hours to fill up uh, the battery um, in a significant manner. You've got Tesla superchargers 15, 20 minutes and off you go. The issue here is that as more people realize that for 95 percent of their driving, they don't need superchargers. You can just charge at home because you're not driving far enough that you're exceeding the range of the vehicle. As people realize, I actually don't need the Tesla supercharger network except for long road trips, which most people don't do. And as people realize that the build quality of Tesla's, in my opinion, still leaves a little something to be desired, and there are legacy automakers that have been making cars for much longer that make really good cars. I have friends now who regularly say to me, Sir, I test drove a Tesla and a Hyundai Ionic, and I like the Ionic better. It felt more solid, and I like the service availability of Hyundai dealerships or whatever the case may be. At the higher end, so many people that say to me, you know, I, I test drove the Model X, the Tesla Model X, but then I looked at the BMW iX, and I'm interested in the forthcoming Volvo EX90, 
and the Rivian blew it out of the water. So the point here is Tesla did so much to speed up the development of electric vehicles, and that's a great thing. Now that the first mover advantage is starting to diminish in total, we are selling more and more electric vehicles. Electric vehicles continue to grow, but Tesla's share of those electric vehicles is diminishing. And it makes sense because you have more companies entering the competition. So is it because Elon Musk sucks that Tesla is now laying off 10 percent of its workforce? I don't think so. Elon Musk has done horrible things with as far as X is concerned. But I don't think he is really to blame for what's going on here with Tesla other than, you know, as CEO, certainly the buck stops with him, but it's not a particular thing. And it is not an indictment of electric vehicles in general, which continue to see more and more sales. This is my interpretation of this. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you care. Let me know if you think this type of segment is even interesting or whether I should never talk about electric vehicles and Tesla again. All right, let's do another type of segment that many have requested, which I don't know if the audience is interested in. I am going to review with you what seems to me something going very wrong with the comedian political analyst Jimmy Dore. I'm going to play a clip for you here of uh, Jimmy Dore from the Jimmy Dore show where he seems to be expressing that he has wholesale accepted a handful or more major conspiracy theories that have been floated over the last many years. And my concern with this is I'm going to play a clip of Jimmy Dore and a clip of Chris Hedges in a moment praising Dore. I don't recognize the left here. So this is not about me gatekeeping and saying, listen, if Jimmy calls himself left, I'm not the person who's going to come in and say no. But similarly to what we saw with Tulsi Gabbard, who now is speaking at Mar-a-Lago and she's speaking at CPAC and she would like to be Trump's VP. I don't recognize leftism anywhere there. And there were people in 2016 saying Tulsi Gabbard is the only real leftist here, totally bamboozled, snowed by her. There were people writing to me saying, David, you've jumped the shark. It's Jimmy Dore who really represents the left. I just don't see the left here. And I admit I haven't seen any of Jimmy's clips for a while now. I didn't realize it had gotten this bad. Let me set this up for you in this 54 second clip. Jimmy guesses that the 2024 election will be rigged for Joe Biden, which Trumpian narrative, of course, uh, Ken Block and other actual experts have looked at 2020. There was no rigging. There was no substantive fraud, more than a few dozen votes that many of them seem to have accidentally uh, been you know, someone who voted absentee and then died and their vote was counted or a junior who voted and it was counted as senior, even though senior was dead. Nothing substantive. And in saying that 2024 will be rigged, Jimmy Dore goes, they blew up Building 7 and they did JFK. They did Libya. They did Afghanistan and they did COVID. This is the left now. This is a scary left. Take a look at this. So it's going to be uh, Biden or Trump. It looks like it's going to be Trump, but not, not uh, necessarily. I, look, I think they're going to probably rig it. That's my guess. Uh, they who? Hmm. Why wouldn't they? Like, of course they. Why wouldn't they? They blow up Building Seven. Uh, they do JFK. Uh, they do Libya. They do what? The sit what? Afghanistan for twenty years. I mean, there isn't a thing they haven't lied to you about. They did COVID. They did COVID. Uh, so why wouldn't they? You, you, talk, you, you think that's beyond the pale that they would rig an election in the United States? So um, I think they'll do anything, uh, including turning us into a transparent banana republic, which is what they've done in the prosecution of uh, Donald Trump, uh, Russia Gate for the whole thing. And so um, they're going to get their wars, and they got them. And Donald Trump was a, a speed bump in them getting their wars. This is extraordinarily serious, serious, serious brain worms. I don't know whether to call them MAGA brain worms, but there's no leftism in there. There's maybe alluding to some faux populist rhetoric about how they are doing all of these things that are bad for the average person, maybe like being super charitable. I don't see any leftism left there. What I see there is 
conspiracy brain. And then they always love to say, well, you're using the word conspiracy simply to as a as a pejorative. Well, in one sentence, you're wrapping in that the people who did building seven and did covid and did Libya, Libya and did JFK are going to do the election theft so that Joe Biden, who, by the way, won by seven million votes in 2020, one of the most scrutinized elections in history and still no, it's sort of like the Biden crimes, 40 years of a public career scrutinized and they've got nothing years now of scrutinizing the 2020 election. They've got nothing other than the number of sandwiches in a van didn't match the number of poll workers. Give me a break. And I'm supposed to recognize that this is leftism. So listen, if at this point we all acknowledge there is nothing left left about Jimmy Dore, and this is the same as Tulsi Gabbard or Dave Rubin or whoever, then fine. It's just another right wing bomb thrower. But if there are still people who recognize leftism in this kind of content, I want to hear from you. What left wing principles are we seeing here? I can enumerate my left wing principles and they relate to economic justice and how taxation should be done and what education policy should be and a respect and understanding for empiricism while understanding that also when you mix the interests of large corporations with empiricism, you get something like big pharma, which has done lots of good and also has to be very closely regulated because sometimes it does bad. Right. I can put together a package that's very clearly there's no place other than the left on which my ideology can exist. I don't see leftism here. Now, just one other clip, and this is kind of a bummer, too. Here's Chris Hedges. Another individual who I, I just is there still leftism here or is it uh, a lot of this at the way what I would end up actually calling this is contrarian anarcho libertarianism. That's kind of what this is. Here's Chris Hedges placing Jimmy Dore alongside comedians like George Carlin and Richard Pryor as if as if Jimmy now forget about the political analysis. The political analysis is actually part of his. He, he's one of the top comedians of all time with this sort sort of socio political commentary. I don't know what the hell's happened to Chris Hedges either. It's sad. Joining me to discuss the transformation of comedy from an art form rooted in the counterculture to one that has largely become a megaphone for power is Lee Camp, who like the comics of another era, Lenny Bruce, Richard Pryor. Mort Stahl, Bill Hicks, and George Carlin, and a handful of his contemporaries, including Jimmy Dore, is not afraid <laughs> to use his razor sharp wit. It's very difficult for me. Oh, there might be two more words here. Against our real enemies. Against, they use their razor sharp wit against our real enemies. When I see Richard Pryor and George Carlin, it doesn't strike me that Jimmy Dore is part of that. And I guess Chris Hedges thinks it is. So listen, this seems like a perverted sort of you might call this the post left or the ex left. I don't know. I want to hear from you if I am misunderstanding how this is the modern left wing. Of American politics and American political critique. If I am making the mistake and simply not seeing this for the true leftism that it is, and it is I who have gone astray, I want to hear from you. I want you to tell me exactly what are the left wing principles here that are being espoused. Uh, the new website is live. I want finally, we finally made it over the finish line. Join Pacman.com. Check out the beautiful new website. I'm so glad. We're still tweaking a few little things, but it, it's a beautiful website. It looks beautiful. We'll take a quick break. It is a packed show today. As many of you no doubt know, I'm originally from Argentina. And one of the things I really miss about being there is the soccer and how easy it is to find it on TV. And now that I live in the US for soccer, I turn to private Internet access. Our sponsor, Private Internet Access, is a VPN that lets you change your IP address and make it look like your computer is anywhere in the world. So I can set it to Argentina to access the soccer matches. I can set it to the UK to access British Netflix content, much of which is really good. A VPN is useful for many things like preventing your browsing history from being leaked online. But downloading and streaming large files like TV shows and movies 
is one area where private Internet access really shines. Many VPNs are just too slow for streaming the buffering, the disconnects. It's a nightmare. It is super easy to use private Internet access. You turn it on with a single click. You're done. Works on your computer, tablet, TV, Roku, game console, anywhere that you stream. And you can use it on all your devices with just one account. Get private Internet access for 83 percent off, which comes out to 203 a month, plus four extra months for free. Go to piavpn.com slash David P. The link is down below. The David Pakman Show continues to depend on your support. You can get a membership at joinpacman.com. And remember that it comes with great perks and great benefits and a new and improved member control panel. The new David Pakman Show website launching yesterday. And one of the big areas of focus was that membership area, which I think works so much better. Sign up at joinpacman.com. You can use the coupon code Save Democracy 24. That is still what's at stake. New website aside, it is still what is at stake. And also, we are now offering through the Substack Premium Newsletter subscription additional written commentary pieces that go out on weekends. You can find out more about that by signing up for our Substack. You can also do that at davidpacman.com. We have an unprecedented situation today. It is the first criminal trial of a former president. That former president is Donald Trump. And indeed, jury selection starts today in the first of four criminal trials. This is a big, big deal. And if you believe that this is the beginning of Trump's path to prison, it starts with this. It starts with jury selection in the first of four criminal trials. Whether there is prison at the end of the rainbow here certainly remains to be seen. If there is to be prison, the path would start with can Trump get jurors in New York acceptable to him and to his lawyers? Trump wanted to make history. And indeed, there has never been a president who has been criminally tried. We talked about those arrests of former presidents, but never have we seen a president criminally trial tried. And the trial really is going to set a new precedent in American politics where a former president is actively involved in a criminal trial while campaigning for reelection and is, although he has not yet officially been made the Republican nominee that will happen at the RNC over the summer. Um, he is the de facto and presumptive Republican nominee. What are the legal boundaries? What is the level of uh, uh, resilience? that is required for Trump to go from four days a week of trial. I guess they get Wednesdays off to campaigning and rallies and all of the cult stuff that he is doing. And there are people who are minimizing the significance of this trial. And I know that there are those who say this is less serious than the other trials because it involves a porn star, at least loosely so. But the truth is that there is election interference here and campaign finance violations at stake. If Stormy Daniels, rather than have accepting a hush money payment, which appears to have violated campaign finance laws, if Stormy Daniels had come out two weeks before the election and told the story of what happened, it's conceivable that the outcome in 2016 would have been different, meaning that Trump would not have selected three anti choice Supreme Court justices, meaning that we would have Roe v. Wade today. So for those saying, ah, this is the weakest of all of them, we might have Roe v. Wade today were it not for the alleged criminality that will be adjudicated in this trial. So let's not minimize it. Uh, this does all revolve around these allegations that in order to pay off Stormy Daniels so that she would shut up, Trump falsified business records, potentially interfering with the election process. And that's a really, really big deal. The backdrop here, of course, is that Donald Trump is continuing to flip out on social media and say it's all unfair. It's all crazy. They're coming after me. We were we were going to look at some of those comments momentarily. Donald Trump asked over the weekend uh, or Friday, do you plan to testify at this trial? As usual, Trump said he would testify. He has said this many times. He never does unless he is forced to by the other side. Trump almost certainly will not testify here in his defense. But he says, yeah, sure. Take a listen. Do you plan to testify in your trial in the North? Yeah, I would testify. Absolutely. It's a scam. It's a scam. That's not a trial. That's not a trial. That's a scam. If you read Jonathan Tarley, if you read 
Andy McCarthy, if you le- read the legal, they said there's not even. Trump's like, if you read, which, by the way, I don't I don't read. Um, Trump always says he would testify. He plans to testify. He never testifies. And we are also going to be looking at the reaction of the Republican Party to this. Here is Senator Katie Britt wearing a large cross necklace across her chest and still using that very disturbing, affected voice that she used for the State of the Union response. Here is Katie Britt, Republican senator on Fox News, dismissing this entire thing. She just doesn't care. And many Republicans are of the same mind. Uh, So, Senator, you're a legislator, but you're also a lawyer. Do you feel like the president can get a fair trial here in New York? No, I mean, look at what we're seeing. This is the left um, continuing to to melt down over Donald Trump. This is the left. They are obsessed. I mean, there is a reason both the federal prosecutors and state prosecutors said we are not going to move forward with this. And then you have Alvin Bragg enter into the arena and want to make a name for himself. People know that people are sick of the two tiered system of justice that we're seeing. We are sick of the two tiered system of justice, but it's not the one she thinks exists. It's the one Ali Honig described to us last week. And I think that the more the media can talk about this, which we're going to see them do, then the less they have to talk about what a disaster this country is under Joe Biden. They know people want Donald Trump back in the White House and they absolutely cannot stand it. Remember, the people, the people who never, ever, ever gave Trump 50 percent of the vote. Those are the people that she says obviously want Trump back in the White House. This is going to be a story throughout these trials covering the the no matter how you cover these trials, even covering them as witch hunts is putting in the minds of voters. This guy might just as likely be to be behind bars as in the Oval Office. Is this really who I want to vote for? So the approach that they are going to take is to go after the media outlets and saying even the fact that this is being covered, Trump's criminal trials, which of course they are. We've never had a president in a criminal trial, never mind four. The fact that media outlets are covering the trials is all to cover up the disasters of Joe Biden. That's what they're going with. And you're going to hear it time and again. It would be journalistic malpractice to ignore one of the biggest stories, arguably of the political world in the last hundred years, the multiple criminal trials against a former president for the things he's accused of doing this morning, minutes before arriving in court, Trump flipping out. Let's briefly talk about that. Just moments before the start of Donald Trump's first of four criminal trials with jury selection in New York, he took to Truth Social and just absolutely losing Truth Central. Trump spending the morning, maybe as he was en route to the courthouse, posting tirade after tirade, starting with, quote, as virtually every legal scholar has powerfully stated, the Biden Manhattan witch hunt, witch hunt, oh boy, witch hunt case is, among other things, barred by the statute of limitations. This trial should be ended by the highly conflicted presiding judge. Remember, no evidence the judge is conflicted and no evidence that Joe Biden is in any way involved. But that's what Trump is insisting. Trump continuing the radical left Democrats are already cheating on the 2024 presidential election by bringing or helping to bring all of these bogus lawsuits against me, thereby forcing me to sit in courthouses and spend money that could be used for campaigning instead of being out in the field, knocking crooked Joe Biden, the worst president in the history of the United States election interference. Trump continuing. Why didn't they bring this totally discredited lawsuit seven years ago? election interference. And then lastly, Trump says, I want my voice back. This crooked judge has gagged me unconstitutional. The other side can talk about me, but I am not allowed to talk about them. Rigged trial. Remember, of course, that the gag orders against Trump have not been particularly effective since he continues to regularly post articles and messages attacking the judge's daughter and attacking key witnesses and going after other people. But he's always the victim. It's election interference. No evidence of that. Biden's doing this. No evidence of that. It should be illegal to even do this to Trump. Doesn't seem to coincide with the law. So Trump is. Remember what I said during the uh, E. Jean Carroll and then also the fraud trials, which were civil in nature. Trump's freedom was not at stake in those trials because they were civil. And Trump was still flipping out, still attacking everyone, still insisting he did nothing wrong. 
Trump's freedom is now on the line. It is now getting very real. So I anticipate in the morning going into court, coming out of court, that Trump will regularly be flipping out and meanwhile trying to run a presidential campaign. The next question is, are there any Republicans willing to say this is too much? This is not who should be representing us other than people like Mitt Romney and Liz Cheney. The answer is apparently not. Let's talk about that next. Republican governor of New Hampshire, Chris Sununu, says that no matter what, he and what he claims are 51 percent of American voters will be supporting Donald Trump regardless of the charges against him, regardless of guilty verdicts against Donald Trump. This was an interview on this week with George Stephanopoulos yesterday. This is not exactly a profile in courage for Chris Sununu. He is asked by George Stephanopoulos uh, to sum up all of the things Trump has done. It doesn't matter. You're still supporting the guy. And Sununu defiantly says yes. And so is 51 percent of America. We're going to fact check those numbers in a moment. That's how badly America wants a culture change. So, 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 so just to sum up, you would you support him for president, even if he's convicted in classified documents. You support him for president, even though you believe he contributed to an insurrection. You support him for president, even though you believe he's lying about the last election. You support him for president, even if he's convicted in the Manhattan case. I just want to say the answer to that is yes. Correct. <laughs> yeah, me and 51 percent of America. Governor, thanks for your time this morning. <laughs> now. Chris Sununu seems to be saying it's not crazy for me to support Trump, despite all of those things George Stephanopoulos said, because 51 percent of America supports him despite those things also. So I don't know where he's getting that number 51 percent. Trump's never gotten 51 percent of the vote. Trump won in 2016 with 45 percent of the popular vote. Trump lost in 2020 with 46 percent of the popular vote. Trump has never had the support of 51 percent of America's voters. And of course, it's a little bit risky to assume that with Trump having 45 and 46 percent of the popular vote previously, that with all of this going on, he's going to grow his share of the vote to 51 percent. I, I think that it's very difficult to make any serious predictions in this uh, election. But the one I would be comfortable making is Trump doesn't get 50 percent of the vote, especially, by the way, if RFK Jr. is still on the ballot. I don't see any way, even in a head to head matchup, that Trump gets 50 percent of the vote. If RFK is in there, Cornell West, Jill Stein, there is no that's a bet I would take. So I don't know where Chris uh, Sununu is getting this stuff. One more clip here. This is from earlier in the interview. George Stephanopoulos starts by asking, even if he's convicted, would you still support the guy? And again, not a profile in courage here from Governor Sununu. Tomorrow, that criminal trial, will your support for Donald Trump continue even if he's convicted in Manhattan? Yeah, I, look, I, this this trial is not going to have major political ramifications that a lot of people, I think, think it may have. When it comes to th these issues, people see it more as reality TV at this point. They, they really do. And so um, this is a lie, by the way, and we have the numbers to back it up. But stand by, you know, whether it's a conviction or what that conviction looks like. Um, a lot of folks, they conflate all four of these different trials that he's in. I don't think it's good that he's going to be in the court. I uh, have to be in there probably three days a week, uh, you know, for, for a number of weeks that takes him off the campaign trail. He'll probably go back on the campaign trail and almost like rehash what's going on. He'll try to victimize it. Um, and, and that has worked for him. Right. I mean, this has been going on for over a year and his poll numbers never seem to go down because of the issue. So listen, uh, his poll numbers, it is true. His poll numbers do not seem to be going down because of this issue, although some like Rachel Bittacoffer would argue it's too early to really see the effect of that. Uh, it is not true that most voters see this trial as nonsense. In fact, we have new polling and we talked about it uh, on the bonus show and we will do so again. Americans do see this as quite serious. Whether their vote would change based on conviction is a different poll. And that is we have some of that data. And it seems that there aren't that many Americans who would vote for Trump if he were to be convicted. But Chris Sununu is gaslighting here, suggesting that nobody really sees this as serious. Most Americans do see these charges as serious. It is true that some are conflating the four different cases. They are four different cases for different alleged wrongdoing. Each will be will be adjudicated in its own venue and on its own merits. But if Sununu is assuming Americans think this is no big deal, I am sure that hardcore MAGA, there's probably 20, 30, 40, maybe million people who uh, see this as just a nonsense witch hunt. The vast majority of the country, including many Republicans, see these as serious charges. And the question now becomes what happens if there's a conviction? Polling from a few months ago suggested a conviction would dissuade even more people from Donald Trump. 
no matter what, we all have to vote. But I think a conviction will hurt Donald Trump. Let me know what you think. Don't forget that the best way to support the David Pakman show is by becoming a member, which gives you access to the daily bonus show, the regular show with no commercials. You also get access to our entire archive of every episode dating back a really long time and plenty of other awesome membership perks. Go to joinpacman.com. Joinpacman.com. Failed former President Donald Trump suffering another series of scary cognitive events at a rally in Schnecksville, Pennsylvania over the weekend. As we've heard from a number of mental health experts in recent weeks, Donald Trump really seems to struggle at night to coherently speak. And here is another one of those examples where Trump just seems to freeze up and just waves the white flag completely aborts what he's trying to say. You'll see, by the way, a woman over his right shoulder. So on the left of the screen over Trump's right shoulder, a woman who winces when Trump does this. She knows how bad it is. This is really difficult to watch. See crazy, really? Just this week, it was reported that an illegal alien and you just look at this, what's happening. And as you can see, there is this moment here where the woman just winces oof, as Donald Trump short circuits again. And, it, and this is one of those moments that Dr. John Gartner told us about and Dr. Siegel. Uh, Trump just doesn't seem to connect. This is not, you know, Joe Biden has a stutter. This is not a stutter. This seems to be a true disconnect between uh, a number of different elements. And it is sad to see the deterioration. Is crazy? Really? Just this week, it was reported that an illegal alien and you just look at this. What and just white flagging completely a number of other. <laughs> I don't know what to call these anymore during this speech. Something very, very wrong. Trump uh, on the word weakness instead referring to weak nicks. And this is a classic phonemic paraphasia, as described by Dr. John Gartner. Before going any further, I want to say God bless the people of Israel. They're under attack right now. That's that's because we show great weakness. It's what we are showing great weakness. And when it happens, Trump always twitches because something is going on there that we are not yet fully able to describe. One other one where there is a very confused rant about trans sports and just really, I mean, he seems super confused. Now, I don't use that. I mean, I think it's terrible, but I don't, I just say from a common sense, is, is it from a common stance rather than common sense standpoint? It's ridiculous. I'm always I'm always embarrassed when I say, and I will stop men from playing in women's. But who the hell would care? He would stop men from playing in women's what Trump lost and disoriented and clueless. Maybe the weirdest moment was an extraordinarily bizarre rant about the Gettysburg Address, which sounds like remember in fifth grade when you had to give an oral book report and you hadn't read the book. That's what this sounds like to me. Where our union was saved by the immortal heroes at Gettysburg. Gettysburg, what an unbelievable battle that was. The Battle of Gettysburg, what an unbelievable. I mean, it was so much and so interesting and so vicious and horrible and mm -hmm. so beautiful in so many different ways. It, uh, Donnie, did you read the book? It represented such a big portion of the success of this country. <laughs> Gettysburg. Wow. I go to Gettysburg, Pennsylvania to look and to watch. He looks and uh, the statement of Robert E. Lee, who's no longer in favor. Did you ever notice that no longer yep. in favor? It's wild. They don't, they're just not big on Robert E. Lee anymore. So really just short circuiting and aimless rants. Uh, maybe the most dictatorial moment of the speech in Schnecksville, Pennsylvania, was when Trump said he wants to be able to override the Constitution and to choose when elections are held. That's funny. Who else likes to do that around the world? I wish we could move the election to Tuesday. Is there anything we can do? I want to move the election to Tuesday. You know, in the UK, they can pick their election. They say, we're going to have the election next week. I want to be able to do that. Would that be possible? 
Constitution be damned. I want to pick Election Day. And then, of course, Donald Trump endorsing the rapid execution of drug dealers. Funniest part about this is Trump, on the one hand, pardoned or commuted the sentences of 85 people convicted of drug drug trafficking or distributing large quantities of drugs. But then now he's going the other way, which is he would want some of those people, I guess, killed. They understand his strength. They understand strength and it'll all stop. You know, when I met with President Xi of China, yeah. I said, do you have a drug problem? No, 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 we have no drug problem. Why no. is that? Quick trial. I said, tell me about a quick trial. When they catch the seller of drugs, right, the purveyor of drugs, mm. they immediately give them the drug dealers. They immediately give them a trial. It takes one day, one day. At the end of that day, if they're guilty, which they always are, according right. to people that study. Sounds like a super just justice system, doesn't it? This. I think I don't think anybody has never been guilty. Within one day, that person is executed. They execute their <laughs> they execute the drug dealers. They have zero drug problem. Trump waxing poetic about the rapid show trials and immediate executions of drug dealers, 85 of whom he pardoned when he was president. Wild and deranged stuff. So Trump cognitively deteriorating authoritarian escalations, uh, dictatorial wet dreams basically what we can expect if we get four more years of him. And we're now going to look at some of the cultists who went to this event. Really, really disturbing stuff. I'm going to take a look at uh, some of the videos. Uh, Trump supporters who went to Trump's latest rally in Schnecksville, Pennsylvania, were interviewed in this first video. You'll see Trump walk over and I want you to look over Trump's left shoulder. If you're listening, this won't play, but I'll describe it to you. Uh, there's a woman who is just blowing him kisses this. And, and you really have to put yourself in the mindset of the cults that that these folks are in blowing Trump endless kisses. Here's Trump. 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 Yeah, Trump. There she is. Kiss after kiss just coming in. OK, all right. So we know that they're in a cult, but let's listen to some of the things that they had to say. Right side broadcasting, interviewing a presumably random selection of Trump supporters. Maybe these are actually the more sane sounding ones, which is really scary. It's wild because interviews with Trump supporters at a rally are no different than an SNL skit. It reads like a gag reel. Here is a guy saying he just did 10 years in prison. He's on probation. And um, Trump is great. <laughs> OK, this is sober. Oh, okay. <laughs> this show just gets better and better, doesn't it? Uh, I did 10 years of prison. <laughs> this show gets even better. <laughs> he, Let me tell you something about Trump. OK, he's the best man. Okay. He did the best that he could do from people that he had to go forward on. I agree. So for because the first, if you got some in the back, if you got some behind you, you can't say I did it, right? Well, for the first two Why years, are you hang on a second. Been office for five years. Hey, well, Danny, hang on a second. For the first two years, he had a Congress that Hillary wasn't at work with him. Water. My mouth is dry. OK, the guy's having a dry mouth, so I guess that's making him say crazy, crazy things. Uh, certainly any of Trump's successes. I think what this gentleman is trying to say, but is struggling to find the words um, is that <laughs> Trump did great things and he would have done more great things if it weren't for Democrats or something like that. I'm being very charitable. Here is another guy at the rally dressed as sort of like American flag Santa of some kind. And he believes that the deep state rigged the election of Senator John Fetterman. So now it, it is uh, the rally was in Pennsylvania focusing in on that must have been a rigged election as well. This is the first time I've asked this question. Fetterman, how did he win? Listen, because it's like one of the monsters. <laughs> no, he didn't win, dude. They planted him like they planted all the rest of the Democrats that get in there that are feeding the same stuff that needs to get done, what their agenda is, and he's just another one of the cogs. So. And I have to admit, I'm from Pennsylvania, and I don't understand who the people were that voted for him. Yeah, yeah. Right. Like, likewise. I mean, I'm in Texas, and I know Ted Cruz wins because I know what he stands for, but Beto wants to grab your AR and and and. and 
Beto. Anyway, from the accents, it seems that a lot of New York people came to I would guess Staten Island came to this uh, rally in Schnecksville. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, there's a guy at the Trump rally who is absolutely furious about having to pay taxes. He doesn't think he should have to pay any taxes because there are undocumented immigrants who receive certain things from the government. So he should pay nothing. I'm struggling to pay for her bills. But if I was if I just come and walk across the border, you know, maybe, maybe I can get twenty five hundred a month you know, to help out. So, I mean, more we see that we see that happen and we're so angry and upset of that. They're like, why are we paying taxes? I don't get it. Exactly. Why pay taxes if rumors you hear about people uh, are enraging you? Here is another gentleman who claims to be the guy who owns the pickup truck that showed the image of Biden hogtied and gagged. I don't know if you remember, uh, Trump retweeted an image a couple of weeks ago of a pickup truck where on the back of the tailgate, there was an image that makes it look like Joe Biden is in the bed of the truck all tied up. Very violent imagery. The guy they interview next claims that that's his truck. Take a listen to this. And stuff, so. All right. Uh, yeah, Google, Google Biden hogtied. You see me all over the news. Uh, I'll do, I'll, is that a safe Google for me? Is that kind of yeah. Did I want to put that in my search engine right here? Trucks right over there. That's all over the news. I saw that. Well, God bless you guys coming out. You know, you. God bless you, man who put violent imagery of the president on the back of your pickup truck. Truck, and then lastly, an individual. Uh, you know, this is actually. I don't know. This they're referring in the comments. This individual is being referred to as he and she. I'm just going to say an individual of unspecified gender is claiming to be related to Dave Thomas, the founder of Wendy's and believes we need Trump back in the Oval Office to save the world. I love your outfit. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about it. Thomas of Wales, uh, Danny Thomas, Marlo Thomas, Dave Thomas of Wendy's. They're my uh, distant and past uh, relatives. Oh, very neat. And I got the good looks. Sometimes it happens that way. Uh, OK, well, I really like the get up. First time to see President Trump. No, ma'am. I had seen Miss. Sorry. Okay. I had seen him up in uh, uh, Wilkes-Barre when he was at the Santana Center two years ago. Okay. And so what is it about President Trump you love most? Yeah, I love the most. He saved America. He will save America. He will save the world. And that's absolutely right. He is the man of the people and he puts America first, but he, he right. is the man of the people all over the world. He loves uh, peace. There was peace in this country and also in the world when he was president. Yeah, um, this individual thinks Trump is going to save the world, despite not even being able to find the money for his legal fees without a month of legal maneuverings. Really, really tough to see this. And when we talk about the reasonable Republicans and reasonable former Trump supporters, and we've seen videos of them, these folks are not convincible. These votes are not changeable. And so to the extent that we can just get the vote out, let's do it. Pennsylvania is a critical state. I don't even think I mean, listen, you never abandon anybody, but just don't even worry about Texas. Biden doesn't need Texas. A Democrat hasn't won Texas for who knows how long. We really just need to make sure that we're getting out the vote from people in the key states that will counteract the votes of these individuals. That's the strategy that is going to get us not to have four more years of Trump. Let me know your thoughts about these folks. How what would it take to change their minds, if anything? If you value what we do at The David Pakman Show, remember to support us on Patreon. Go to patreon.com slash David Pakman Show, where you can get access to behind the scenes videos the daily bonus show, the commercial free daily show. You can support the show for as little as two dollars a month. Check it out at patreon.com slash David Pakman show. In the midst of internal chaos, the Republican Speaker of the House, MAGA Mike Johnson, made a pilgrimage down to Mar-a-Lago in Palm Beach, Florida, to stand behind next to and in front of Trump to say everything's good. We're all on the same page. Everything's great. A lot of the point of this is because of increased tension between MAGA Mike Johnson and some elements of the Republican Party, like Marjorie Taylor Greene, who is increasingly signaling ah, he may be next to go after Kevin McCarthy as well. So MAGA Mike Johnson flies down to Florida 
and then they do a press conference, really weird press conference with Trump in Florida. And we're going to look at a couple elements here. And at the top line, Trump repeating this totally grotesque and debunked lie that Democrats and specifically Democratic mothers in blue states are murdering their babies. Trump repeating this yet again. This is for having the courage to do it. What they did is very simply give it back to the state. And I'll tell you, the Democrats are the radicals in this because they're willing to have abortions in the seventh, eighth, ninth month. They're even willing, and you can call it what you want, but you go back to the governor of Virginia, the previous governor of Virginia, the Democrat governor of Virginia, we talked about execution of a baby after birth and you can say what you want, but that's extreme and that's radical and nobody should have that. Well, you can say what you want, including that it's not happening and it's not a thing. And that would be called murder of a birthed person. And it's just a grotesque, disgusting, misogynistic lie that continues to perpetuate. Uh, there is uh, it is true that there is a very small percentage of abortions that take place in the third trimester of that. They are overwhelmingly taking place at the beginning of the seventh month. These are increasingly dire, complex uh, medical situations where uh, the mother's uh, life can be on the line, but they continue to repeat it time and time and time again. Trump's position on abortion is so increasingly incoherent because it's all about I'll say whatever you want as long as you vote for me. A reporter actually says to Trump, are you pro choice or are you pro life? Which one is it? And Trump doesn't answer the question. Listen to this. Excuse me, please. Just a follow up. Over the, over the last few decades, Mr. President, you have both considered yourself pro choice and pro life. Which one is it? Well, you know exactly which one it is. And when I was in New York and when I was a Democrat also, just like Ronald Reagan, you know, Ronald Reagan was a Democrat. We sort of followed a very similar path. But if you look at what we've done with Roe v. Wade, we did something that everyone said couldn't be done and we got it done. And I give great credit to the Supreme Court and the, the justices for having the courage to do it. What they did is very simply give it back to the state. And I'll tell you, the Democrats are the radicals on this because they're willing to have abortions in the seventh, eighth. All right. So then he goes back to that talking point. But again, no real answer here. Call me whatever you want. Let states do whatever the, the, that they want to do. If you're happy with what a state did, vote for me. Thank me for getting that done. If you're unhappy with what a state did, don't blame me. It was the state's decision. Whatever. Just vote for me is what Trump should be saying in response to these questions about abortion at this point in time. Then we hear from MAGA Mike Johnson. MAGA Mike Johnson then announces he's going to introduce a bill to require proof of citizenship to vote which, by the way, you can't even register to vote unless you're a citizen. You, you just you can't even register to vote. Uh, and Trump kind of looking upset with a scowl on his face. Republicans are introducing a bill that will require proof of citizenship to wow. vote. It, it seems like common sense. I'm sure all of us would agree. We only want U.S. citizens to vote in U.S. elections. Yeah. And that's the, those are the only folks who can get on the voter rolls. So quite literally, only American citizens can vote. But there are some Democrats who don't want to do that. Uh, we believe that one of their designs, one of the reasons for this open border, which everybody asks all around the country, why would they do this? Why would they allow all this chaos? Why the violence? Because they want to turn these people into voters. Right now, the administration is encouraging illegals to go to their local welfare office to sign up for benefits. So listen, uh, oh, hold on, there's a few more seconds. Well, guess what? When you go to a, a welfare office, they also ask you if you would like to register to vote. Yeah. So. Um, two things on this. If they are legal immigrants, of course, we should be encouraging them to register to vote. Why wouldn't we want every legal citizen if they are legal immigrants who are citizens? Why shouldn't they be voting? They should be encouraged to register to vote because they have the same right as everybody else as naturalized immigrants to the United States like me. Right. I mean, I, I get why shouldn't I be encouraged to vote? Uh, on the other hand, if you're an undocumented immigrant, you can't even register. So this is a c complete misdirection, and it's all in service of setting up more claims that if Biden wins, it was stolen. That's what the plan is. They've done it before. They're going to do it again. And um, lastly, here is MAGA Mike Johnson saying everywhere. This is like a they came to me with tears in their eyes and they said, sir, sort of story. MAGA Mike Johnson says the number one concern he's hearing from people when he goes different places is about 
election integrity. It's an incumbents all around. Uh, I've been to think, 23 states now in the last several weeks, and everywhere we go, one of the first questions that people ask about is this issue of election integrity. The border is right. the number one issue in America. There's never been a political issue uh, that, that scored so high in the polls as a matter of concern. And it doesn't matter where anyone lives, because as we say now, every state is a border state. Uh, they're deeply concerned about that. And election integrity yeah. is tied to border, the lack of right. border security. President Biden has created a catastrophe and he did it by Anyway, you get the point here. And of course, uh, those who have examined this uh, professionally, like our former uh, prior guest on the show, Ken Block, have said there is no state where the small number of irregularities comes even a fraction of a fraction of a fraction close to having made a difference in that state. So the idea that even non border states are worried about undocumented immigration because undocumented immigrants are voting and stealing the election not even plausibly happening in a single state. And Mike Johnson says people are coming up to him to talk about it. Now, if people are coming up to him to talk about it, it would be because the Republican Party has spent three years telling them this is the number one issue, even though it's not really an issue. But more than likely, the stories are completely fabricated. So Trump having MAGA Mike Johnson down there, I guess, to try to run a little interference about the internal Republican conflict that is again threatening to rip the party further apart. Trump didn't seem super happy to have MAGA Mike down there. MAGA Mike making his pilgrimage and saying everything he's expected to say. We'll see now if Marjorie Taylor Greene calms down with her recent attacks on MAGA Mike Johnson. This is something that is so disturbing to see, but also confirms exactly what we believed. Our friends over at The Good Liars interviewed a woman in New Hampshire. This is so relevant now because of what's going on with our Roe v. Wade, Trump's abortion statement, the 1864 law in Arizona, the good liars. Here's Jason from the good liars speaking with a Trump supporter who says, I'm a Trump supporter and I'm pro choice. She's not against abortion. She's a pro choice Trump supporter in New Hampshire. She has no idea that Trump selected three Supreme Court justices, which directly led to the overturning of Roe v. Wade. She supports Trump. She's pro choice. She doesn't realize it's Trump's choices that took away abortion from so many people. Look at this. What are your thoughts on abortion? Um, I think it's your own choice. Yeah. You can't really decide. Yeah. You, don't want, you, you don't know what the situation, the, the situation is. So you, you consider yourself pro-choice? Yes, pro-choice. Are you upset that Donald Trump appointed the justices that overturned Roe v. Wade and took that choice away from so many people? Um, I don't think it should be taken away. No, and it she has no idea how we got here and the history of it doesn't bother you that Trump appointed the justices that overturned Roe v. Wade. Doesn't bother me at all. I think he's the best man for the job. We have nobody else that is. If you're if your head is spinning, that's incoherent. She doesn't think they should overturn Roe v. Wade, and it doesn't bother her that Trump appointed the justices that overturned Roe v. Wade. She has no idea what's going on. But, but he, he did take away the, the choice for a lot of women because of that. That doesn't bother you. Now women don't have that choice. He have something in place. If he, if he made that decision, he, he's a great businessman, and I'm not going to go, you know, he's a great businessman, and I'm going to let him say what he wants to say, do what he wants to do. So I don't know what being a great businessman has to do with selecting anti choice Supreme Court justices who ultimately overturned Roe v. Wade, which this woman is against. But this is exactly what I'm talking about. This is the example of what I'm talking about. They don't even know what Trump has done, what he stands for. There's a complete and total incoherence. Now, I'm going to say one thing. Unlike the rally goers we saw in videos earlier in the show, I think that if we sat down with this woman and explained it to her, I think she would be gettable as a voter. I think she would be potentially willing to rethink her support of Trump if we just really in a calm situation, right? She's got a microphone in front of her, et cetera. I think if we sat her down and explained to her what it is that Trump has done, she might reconsider her vote. I think it's possible. Let me know what you think. We have a voicemail number. That number is two one nine two David P. I love this voicemail. Here's a caller who is basically saying to me, David, you've been saying this thing about the 2024 election. I don't understand it. Please explain it to me. Let's take a listen and then I will explain. 
Hey, David. My name's Roxanne, calling from San Diego. Yes. And I just heard you said, say that this um, election will probably come down to like a half a million people from swing states or something like that. And I don't, can you explain how it would come down to that when I thought it was more based on the electoral college? Yes. So I didn't, I not understanding that. This is a great question. If you don't understand it, just ask and we will discuss it. Uh, it is true that in the United States, the presidential election depends on the Electoral College. And if we look here are the 2020 results, I have them up on the screen. Uh, the reason that Joe Biden became president is because you need 270 electoral votes to become president. Joe Biden got 306. And so he did it. He needed 270. He got 306. However, let's look at some of the details. Joe Biden won Georgia, which is worth 16 electoral votes, but he only won Georgia by 11,000 votes. Joe Biden won Pennsylvania, 20 electoral votes, but he won it by only 81,000 votes. And Joe Biden also won Arizona, which is worth 11 electoral votes, but Biden only won Arizona by 10,000 votes. So without those three states, Pennsylvania, Georgia and Arizona, without those three states, Biden doesn't become president. If Trump had won those three states, Trump would have 279 electoral, meaning Trump becomes president. And so what you look at is it doesn't matter that Biden won California by six million votes. If only one hundred and two thousand votes in Arizona, Georgia and Pennsylvania went the other way, those one hundred and two thousand votes flip the results. So in twenty twenty, Biden's victory, in a sense, was decided by one hundred and two thousand votes in three states. Biden could have won California by one or by one million or by ten million. It's still only worth 55 electoral votes. And the entire race would have flipped if 102,000 people in those three states, Pennsylvania, Georgia and Arizona, had voted Trump instead of Biden. I expect a similar scenario in 2024. So 500,000 votes in five states, it, it even may depend on less. And I, we can put it a different way. If it's a similar situation to 2020, the 2024 election might come down to just 100,000 votes in three states. That's why all of this. Well, the polls look OK. Maybe I'll stay home. Maybe I'll write someone in third party. Maybe I'll check the box for Bobby Kennedy if I'm in like the one or two states he's on the ballot. That's why it's potentially potentially going to help make Trump president again. I'm not going to do it. You figure out the way you want to do it and let me know. Uh, we will talk today on the bonus show about TV networks now increasingly pushing Biden and Trump to commit to presidential debates. Will they do it? We will talk about Joe Biden's new student loan forgiveness program. What are the particulars of it? And we will discuss a lawsuit wherein Fox News, Newsmax, Stephen Crowder and Tim Poole are being sued by a man who says they falsely identified him as a neo-Nazi mass shooter, something he claims he is not. All of those stories and more on today's bonus show. Sign up at joinpacman.com. The new website is live. Remember that you can also get the premium written content by becoming a Substack premium newsletter subscriber. And of course, all of my children's books are available at davidpackman.com slash book. I'll see you on the bonus show and I'll be back tomorrow with a new show as well. Thanks a lot for watching today's show. I just want to take a second to tell you about today's sponsors. If you care about your privacy, your VPN should be private Internet access. The only VPN to prove multiple times in court, they don't log your activity. A VPN hides your IP address online, preventing your ISP and big tech companies from tracking what you do. Private Internet access is lightning fast with IP addresses in 91 countries and all 50 states, plus with a 30 day money back guarantee and 24 seven customer support. It's really worth trying. Get 83% off, which is just 203 a month, plus four extra months for free at PIAVPN.com slash David P.